Welcome to Terror Prime Live. Darth Anonymous here. Vornak joining me. Welcome um, to Terror Prime Live. Live. Oh dear. Darth Anonymous here. Vornak joining me. Welcome to Terror Prime Live. That will not be happening. <laughs> Welcome to our technical glitch for the night, folks. Yes, there we go. So you got... There we go. Yes. So, um, fittingly, it's our tech special. <laughs> you can see how hopeless we are with it all. That's why we brought in an expert. Exactly. And uh, with us here is uh, Rob Madcow from the... Uh, 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 Saber Forums um, uh, from Genesis Custom Sabers. How you doing, Rob? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's uh, real fun being here. Excellent. Excellent. Nice Good to make it. Excellent, too. And then we've got uh, J.M. Plagueis from the uh, forums here, too. How you doing? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. And uh, we hear that we've got some, uh, we've got uh, Rob's Twitter feed going, got questions going there, so we've got some stuff going there. Remember, we always take uh, questions from the YouTube page, um, Facebook, page. Facebook page, any of the Saber forums that we've got the threads going on in. Um, yeah, otherwise, we'll kind of get into it. Um, I'll start it out with just kind of giving a background in why we're doing because um, we're into more of the combative stuff and getting the the, the, the seven forms down and all that kind of stuff. Because um, we're into more of the combative stuff. Yeah. Where is that coming the, from? The, the hmm. seven forms. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, right. we'll but, uh, yes, we'll watch for that echo. Um, so... One of the things that got us into the, the in, into this whole thing was that we were looking for a good sword analog to do sparring with, full contact sparring that's not going to be too dangerous. And we experiment with lots of different types of weapons, uh, the old German steel weapons. and Polypropylene and, and wooden, and wooden uh, practice swords. Right, and we found that all of those needed a lot more protective equipment and, and all this. And we got into this, and we found that we had totally customizable hilts, Removable blades, and well, hell, they glow. They light up. Yeah. So <laughs> hey, it was a win-win for all of us and, over and here. The protective requirements for for gear was very minimal. Um, stuff stuff that we literally had lying around the house. Exactly. Um, most people, not being the type of people we are, might have to actually go buy something. But the safety gear was, was it lowered the bar for safety gear to get in to be able to play safely. Right, exactly. So, in uh, service of that, we want to investigate this whole weapon. And like we said, we, being new to this whole uh, hobby and sport, uh, needed to bring somebody in that <laughs> knew a little bit about it. So, we brought uh, Rob here with us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what um, Genesis and uh, what you do? Sure. Is it all right if I give you a bit of background, kind of how I got sure. here? Absolutely. Please. Give us. Uh, well, I've been doing this for about 15 years uh, as a hobby, um, professionally a lot shorter than that, but it started pretty much how everybody else did, and one of my questions on Twitter was the first lightsaber I ever made, which was about 16 years ago, and it was butt ugly, <laughs> and it was, uh, yeah, if you imagine a bolt from a hardware store with a uh, socket and cap, and then a piece of pipe, and then a bunch of alternating washers to make a grip, and uh, to make something that looked like Luke's saber, which is probably how most of us in the hobby of crafting sabers started. We wanted to make something that looked like what was hanging on Luke's belt uh, from the movies. Now, those of us who are old, as old as me go back to the original trilogy and some of those inspiring images long before the prequels that ever came out. Um, but one thing led to another. Uh, we found each other on the internet, a bunch of guys. Um, There's saber forums that started up at the Custom Saber Shop and then fxsabers.com. And the more we kind of connected with each other, shared uh, ideas, innovations, tech, um, you know, the, the hobby began to grow. We started doing sabers that you could actually fight with that would light up with LEDs. And then uh, uh, Irv at Collector Labs came in and started doing sound cards that were 10 times better than what Master Replicas were, you know, were putting out. Meanwhile, we're gutting Master Replica sabers for our own yeah. sound cards and cramming them into stuff. And, and it seems like every time you turn around, somebody's blowing you away with a new innovation or a new idea. And uh, so 10 years later, um, we have some amazing do-it-yourself custom savers. A few of us around the world who have actually been uh, fortunate enough to get paid for what we do so that we can actually make a meager living at it. Um, so, yeah, long story short, that's what I do. I make the, the most awesome savers I possibly can. 
uh, both really high-end ones and then some, some lower and more economy models. And uh, that's what's keeping me busy. I don't know, does that answer your question? I don't even remember what the question was. Yeah. Oh, no, no, that was, yeah. that was perfect. Yes, who, who are you and how did you get into this? I think yeah. that, that covered it. Yeah, exactly. And um, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you mentioned the whole, uh, the sabers you can fight with, because obviously that is the most attractive. One of the prime factors for us. Right. Um, now, I, I've taken a look at it. We haven't had the pleasure of using any of your stuff yet, but um, I've taken a look at it, and, you know, it's very, very nice stuff, and hopefully you'll be able to show us some of that stuff um, later on. Um, and we were talking earlier uh, about do we... Do we like kind of like longer hilts and what we like in the in, in, in the in the thing? And we're coming from a very practical standpoint. So like those master replica stuff, the cannon, the cannon stuff that looks really really good on film is generally a real bear to wield. Yeah, it's a royal pain. You know, yeah, like all, the, all the all the cool looking accoutrements and projections and knobs and boxes. Um, you, know, you you might as well fence with a Ru Rubik's cube for your <laughs> right. it's Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the 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 whole area of the custom stuff, the stuff that's just using the idea of the saber, is, is you know, obviously probably the coolest innovation I've seen in in. Um, I, I don't know what in, we in, want in to call it. In the short time we've been. In Yes, in the short time we have been involved, and it, you know, which you know, granted, has not been that long. Um, but I don't know. Why don't you take us through uh, the kind of basics um, of the actual uh, fightable stunt savers that we that, that we call that we that we use that are illuminated? Sure. You talking to me? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, we. Generally, yeah, you, you sabers you, you fall into a couple of cate categories. You got your belt hangers, which are the costumers, what they would wear on your belt. Doesn't do anything but look nice. Can sit on a shelf. Um, then you've got your, you know, uh, your high-end customs, which are sabers that, as much as possible, will do it all. Light up, have all kinds of computer functions, plug into your computer, all kinds of craziness. And then in between are what are generally called stunt sabers, which means they like the ones you have there, and I've got one here. Um, they're solid enough to fight with. You could use them for filming, for dueling, for play fighting, um, and they light up. So if they meet those two requirements, you can fight with it and it lights up. Generally, the, the loose terminology that we're throwing around is you've got yourself a stunt saber. Gotcha. Um, so that, you know, that's probably stunt sabers actually uh, have, they started becoming popular shortly after Ryan versus Dorkman, if anybody remembers those videos yeah. on, online. You know, guys, hey, you can make, what if you can make sabers and you could fight with them? Um, the idea of actually using um, a lit blade in filming, you'd be surprised, is actually relatively new. I'm working with a guy named Corey Vidal who does uh, vlogs on YouTube, and a big Star Wars fan, and um, and he's actually using a couple of Ascend stunt sabers like this one uh, in some videos because, you know, as you may or may not realize, the movie shots, when you have a close-up of a saber and you see the glow of a blue or a red on someone's face, that's all done in post-production. That's a real pain for the guys to do. The idea that you could actually flick on a stunt saber, use it in a fight, rotoscope in the blade later and have natural lighting effects on the scene, that's that's pretty new in videos and uh, hope, hopefully we'll you know we'll blend the, the stunt saber combat world into the you know fan film world a little bit more. Oh, Again, no idea what your question was. I go off in these directions. Oh no, that's that's please, totally please. fine. That's what we do as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with uh, using it on film, I'm actually I mean Coincidentally, not coincidentally, I mean, probably comes as no surprise. I'm actually, I, I actually, my degree is in art and filmmaking and, and all of that kind of stuff, which is how I got into making the tutorials and stuff like that. Um, so uh, using exactly that, I mean, I've known for a long time that the, uh, the, the sabers they use in the movies are just these rods. Yeah. You, the, the, at first they were just kind of aluminum rods, which broke every every two shots yeah. that they had to keep replacing, and then they would rotoscope in some animation. Or, or, or light, it from off, light it from off screen. Right, in the very beginning they yeah. had the reflective tape against the thing, and it looked yep. you know, kind of like disappeared and, and all of that. Um, and so when um, when I finally saw the, the LED illuminated sabers, I'm like, well, why didn't they use those? <laughs> it's like you would save on so much money to do that. And now I hear they're, they're, they're selling carbon carbon fiber, rods. Car, carbon fiber rods to put in these things. It's like, 
why bother? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> if, if you look at any any of the behind the scenes footage from the films, those, those carbon fiber rods bend and break in rehearsal and in production. Um, they're not as durable as these. Yeah. Well, and, and even yeah, if they okay, are, yeah, even, yeah. even let, let's just say let's say they do have more okay. durability. Let's just let's just do that. But these are like they light up. twelve bucks. And they light you up. Know, yeah, they light up. They're really easy to do. And I'm sorry, we we go at this stuff pretty hard. And these heavy grade blades have never have not broken on us once. We broke the tip off of a couple of them, yeah. but that's <laughs> most of the time. That's because of our fencing masks. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, you, the the use of them in 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 film should be should be great. Hopefully, with the whole buyout thing, maybe they'll throw some business your way, and you'll get some uh, get some screen time. And uh, who knows? Anything's possible. Yep. Keep our uh, fingers crossed. Yes, for exactly. All, for all the saber smiths out there, I mean, the potential for to benefit oh, anyone in the field. Oh yeah, absolutely. The whole let's hope. Let's hope. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and you know, extend the hobby. More people in it, the, the better. You know, um, let's do a quick check for questions. Yeah, yeah. What is, do you got any um, any questions off your Twitter feed that you're? Uh, well, let um, me take a look here. I got a couple. I'll just mention them quickly. I got the one to describe my first saber, which was but ugly. And then uh, the, uh, the next question is asking. This is both of the same guy. Tyler is asking, but what's next for for my particular line of stunt sabers, um, which we may get into a little bit later. Um, and then I've okay. got a question here. And this is for me, but maybe we could just handle this for everybody. Uh, question from uh, from Ryan. Ryland, sorry. If you could have a duel, friendly or otherwise, with any Star Wars character, who would it be and why? <laughs> um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about this, but the first person that comes to my mind would be Mace Windu. I just think he's the ultimate badass saber fighter, so. Yeah. yeah. Um... It depends if you're talking about in the Clone Wars cartoon or in the live action movie. Nobody oh, in the just, live action movie really. I pretend the Clone Wars cartoon doesn't exist. So if you mention it, I'll just do this and go about my business. Okay. All right. Well. Uh, that's just me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're probably like that with the prequels. But anyway. Um, yeah. Nobody. Nobody in the uh, in, in in any of the movies really. Strikes my fancy, but we're from a kind of different background. Yeah. So I, I, no, I'd never even considered this kind of question. Yeah, um, I don't know. None of them. Well, maybe Darth Maul. Or, oh well, yeah. I mean, just because Ray Park. Um, yeah, he, Ray, he, yeah. He, he can he, move. Yeah. He's, he's only, he, he, it's, yeah. It's nice to see someone who who knows how to move. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah that would be good. Um, um, I, I guess you know, I, iconically Darth Vader, but that's I like, yeah. I like right. well, I, I like fighting people who are substantially larger than me. It's, right. It doesn't always come across well here. I'm 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 just about five six. I'm not very large, um, and I like fighting people who are larger because it's it's sometimes more of a challenge and sometimes it's it's less so. Um, right. Because of depends. Some 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 people tend to overestimate based on them being they being bigger that they're going to crush their opposition. Right. I like, yeah. I like to change that opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, but if you're talking, I mean, I don't know so much about like what, how, like I said, and, and you know, <laughs> we can't talk about it. So, you know, if you're talking about Clone Wars kind of stuff, there's there's some character but he'll going on there. But he, yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. So we, we're not going to go there. <laughs> um, we have we have our other. Our other yeah. Well, how about how about you, uh, Plagueis? What do you think? What I face. Yeah, who 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 would you like to duel? Um, well, I mean, I was gonna say uh, Krell, but again, that's going to Clone Wars territory. But if I was to choose a person from the saga, um, I don't know. The first when you guys were discussing it, the first person that popped into my head was Anakin. So I guess Vader, but I meant more of actually Anakin, uh, just because. I mean, I don't. I'm not a martial artist, but I feel that my style is most matched Ooh. with him. Jar Jar. I think that's what we can all agree on. Yeah. 
<laughs> but the question, fight, maybe one thing. The question is, if you could just, who could you kill outright? Definitely Jar Jar. Yeah, yeah right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes. I, are we yeah. unanimous? Yes. Yes. Pass my acclamation. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we've got, I mean, we've talked about, like, because we're into the fighting aspect of it. We obviously don't go for a whole lot of bells and whistles, right? So we don't even really know what bells and whistles there are out there. So you, if the stunt saber is, is the tube and the blade and the light. Right. What else is there? What, yeah, yeah. And, and I know, I know that... There's sound and there's variations, and, and, but how elaborate can this become? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you give us some examples of, like, how, where, where, this, where this stuff can go, uh, Rob? How elaborate this can become, that's a huge question because this has really grown. What, what, you guys will know this maybe a few years ago. What used to be maybe a couple hundred people online is now thousands. Yeah. And, and in that, you've got professional electronics engineers. You've got Irvin France, who's an electronic engineer and who specializes in motion detection, gesture detection, and audio. And then you've got a high-end machinist. The machinist that I work with for my prototypes is actually a former aerospace uh, engineer. So you've got some really high-level talent when it comes to bringing innovations to what's possible in the Sabre. It used to be, you know, people would say, well, I'd like a Sabre that blah, 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 blah. And you'd say, no, no, you can't do that. Now, you, almost anything is possible if you have the coin, the time, and the connections. You can, you can build a Sabre. And th this is the thing, is it used to be the stunt Sabres were on one side what you could deal with. And then on the other side were your decorative sabers that had functionality, had computers inside and sound cards, but they weren't as durable. Um, that's really um, that's really been a race and the two spheres have come together. And so what you have now is a saber like this one. And like really any saber that you've built yourself from the custom saber shop, um, there are parts that are machined not just for the external, but for the internal parts of the saber. So you can, uh, you can have a, a battery holder that is designed to mount a sound card on that actually butts into a speaker holder so that you can do your own servicing in and out. Everything fits nice and tight and it's nice and durable. You can add uh, a layer of uh, a plastic sleeve or things to keep uh, the electronics from, in, from shorting out against the body of the Sabre. Um, and when you start doing that, then, then you, you take what's still a stunt Sabre in that you can fight with it. You can remove the blade, change the blade when you break it or whatever. And you can start customizing your own buttons. No longer you just have an on-off switch. Um, you've got, with most of the high-end sound cards, you've got an auxiliary button, which triggers blaster blocks, lockups. Uh, in the case of a crystal focus, could trigger the menu so you can toggle between different sound fonts. Um, on the Sabre that I have here, I've got some sound fonts I'm working on that sound like Vader, Luke, uh, original ones. There's one sound font someone did that sounds like cats fighting. Uh, it's just... <laughs> it's, 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 Blowing my mind, what's possible out there, and uh, yeah, and then uh, then you move from that into the eternals of the saber. You can you can get crystals. You can mount a crystal in your saber. You can light the crystal. You can get electronics that will make the crystal pulse. So now we're not even talking about fighting with the saber, taking apart stuff, and having all kinds of goodies inside. Oh, play so, it. Put that up there again. Yeah, show oh. us what you got. Yeah, I'm just showing the crystal part right there in mine. There you go. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Just, yeah. just out of curiosity, Plagueis, how did you do that? It looks like you did that yourself. What did you do? I did, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm no machinist. That's, I, I had to borrow a friend's drill. And it's basically in my, all my stunts. It's just a one-inch hole uh, and then the crystal chamber showing through. It's what it is, is a, a polycarbonate tubing in the night. The crystal is basically pressed fit in there, and there's a five millimeter illuminating the crystal. So it's just a simple crystal chamber. So yeah, but that's an example. <laughs> better yeah. than my first crystal chamber. Easily better than my first crystal chamber. Wow! There you go. Yeah. Hey, good job. <laughs> that's yeah. I that's that's really cool. It was my first uh, kind of customization I ever did on my person, own personal sabers was adding uh, illuminated anti-vandal switches in crystal chambers. That, that's what, that was my uh, first step in nice. the thing, I guess. But. Cool. Uh, looks like Rob's getting something ready for us. Yeah, since we're on the topic of crystals, um, this is my Janus saber. I don't know if you can see it very well. That, uh, 
that I just finished. So I've done a, my own design for what Jaina Solo Saber would look like. I read a lot of the expanded universe novels. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you can see it in, in this, but there's, um, in the insides of the Saber, you've got, this oh, is yeah. a bit of, you've got the sound card, and here's the, the speaker actually fits in this gray housing here. Um, the sound card is here, and the sound card controls a bar graph, so you've got LEDs, and then what's glowing here, you can't really see it in the camera, is uh, a quartz crystal. And so this is uh, this okay. is a Crystal Focus version 6. So this is the high-end sound card that comes out of, uh, uh, of Plector Labs in France. Um, and it's designed, you know, for the motion detection, plays all the sounds. But the, the more recent versions, actually, uh, you have the ability to make the crystal pulse. And I've got a sound font I've made for this one. So when I turn it on, it doesn't sound like a lightsaber. There's actually just a faint hum, and the, the LEDs on board there that I put on board do a little bar graph animation. This is a sound font that simulates a Jedi working on the crystal on the inside of their saber. So when you press the auxiliary button, you get different <laughs> sounds that would simulate kind of like fine-tuning your saber. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so not only can you doctor up the insides, but you can actually get right into the experience of if I was a Jedi, you know, forming yeah, my saber yeah. with my crystal and lit my way and all that stuff. It's just the sky's the limit what you can do nowadays. Wow. So, uh, re related, related to all of this, um, you were talking a minute ago about, uh, about the durability of the components. Um, the, the primary reason that we've stuck with, non, with, with just light up sabers is that we hit them really hard. Um, and our, our view was that adding, you know, putting in sound, adding in other components, is, means that now there's something else in there that can break. Um, yep. How 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 durable can you can you make something beyond just the stunt saber? How 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 rough and tumble can you get with some of these that do have some more effects? And that's a, an excellent question because that's changed uh, pretty dramatically in the last I would say about three or four years. Um, you've probably heard the phrase you can have it cheap, you can have it fast, or you can have it good. Yeah, you know, right. you have two, but you can't have all three. Well, right. Sabres is kind of the same way. You can have a lot of bells and whistles, a lot of really cool things. You can have it, you know, durable, um, you know, uh, but or you can, you know, I guess you can throw cheap in there too. But in order to, and this is more of your question, in order to have really both, to have the really cool bells and whistles and have it durable, this is where you really need to spend a lot of time with the engineering of where everything is going to go, how it's attached. Um, with a saber like this, these are, uh, actually, these are custom saber shop parts that I've machined and modified on my own way. Oh, cool. So that, I, because I could take, I could try to start with aluminum and make the parts myself, but the, the, the parts from custom saber shop, the MHS parts, are so well designed, yeah. so well yeah. thought out, that really, if you want to do a one-of-a-kind custom saber, it would be better than starting from scratch. It would be better to get the parts that look close to what you want, than take them to a machinist, get different grooves machined in here, different radiuses, different parts that, you know, because they thread in really nice. Once they're together, pretty much whatever's in there is fairly solid. And this is the second part of the question is, is you want to um, you want to build some kind of a framework inside of the saber. There's several different ways of doing that. I've used a, a PVC conduit that you can get at Home Depot and then you can, you can machine it down or sand it down to actually fit inside there. Um, there's different fluorescent lighting tube protectors. You can even buy rings or discs at the custom saber shop that are the exact diameter of the inside. So then you add some threaded rods and you can make you know, a segmented chassis that fits whatever your components are, whatever your batteries are, whatever your sound card is. And then you can ensure that uh, once it's in there, you can smash this thing around and it's not going anywhere. You know, and the, the electronics themselves, if you get the good ones, they're, they're built to, to fight with. They're, they're not going to break. I don't know, does that answer your question? That, that did. That, that did. Un unfortunately, that means that uh, yeah. sabers might become more expensive for us now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and obviously because we teach so many kids, we, we like, you know, um, like we've been go doing, doing the ultra sabers, ultra sabers things, which has really nice, cheap, tough little things. We can just throw a, I mean, there's just a simple little thing in there. Kids love them, and they, whoo, boy, are they tough. Yeah, yeah. Hand, and, hand, one, hand one of these to a, to a seven-year-old kid, and you just make sure he doesn't hit anybody with it. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so we've just been kind of, like, starting to get into the uh, to the customization and now into the sound and then all of this other, uh, this other stuff, which is going to drain our pocketbooks. This is and, a deep rabbit hole. 
Yes, it is. Yes, it goes back to the framework a little bit. If like, I mean, if you even if you want to start at uh, rock bottom, which is what I did for these chassis. I mean, like I said, I don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera, but see, this retention screw is actually just holding in that piece of PVC, and there's a crystal chamber right there. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, you can start out really, really simple, and then advance to more complex chassis systems and stuff like that if they feel comfortable that way. So, I mean, it could be a matter of polycarbonate tubing, you know, and retention screw, and then... Yeah, I mean, it's like, like... This actually does a decent job, um, because, I mean, for what it is, I mean, it's just holding this whole unit in place because I have that polycarbonate. Right. Lead, too. So, I mean, people can start simple and work out, too. Yeah. So, yeah, totally. And, I, like, uh... Um, yeah. What was I going to say? I have no idea. Dang. I hate when that happens. Right. What I was going to say about Rob, you were saying um, now with all what's possible because we've got all these people that are in it, yeah. right? I mean, I've got a guy that's helping me with um, a lot of the customizations now. I've got um, here a drawer right. who is an uh, you know, old airplane mechanic and computer. He, he Right now he does precise measurement and, and machining for uh, scientific instrumentation all over the world and all that kind of stuff. So he's been getting geeked out in this whole thing too. So yeah, I mean, in your, the, if the electronics are that tough, you know, there we go. And from what I hear, it's, that is abso ab absolutely the case, especially with the airline stuff because they have sensors that are meant to yeah. be on aircraft, so, but, yeah, um, yeah, I don't know, uh, what other, what, what, uh, what other questions do we got, uh, going on, on any of these things? Any, well, let's see, I got a question about sound, um, this is from Lord, ha Lord Hake Fellflame, I yes, apologize for Hake butchering Hake. your name. No, you um, did it. You did it. We 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 had that exact same problem. Yes. <laughs> Question about sound. How would you recommend muting sound in a saber that doesn't have a mute ability or uh, on the card? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I I can demonstrate. I have a really high tech technique that I can show you. All right. Um, so if you've got a uh, a lightsaber that's sound equipped, equipped, and you want to mute it, uh, so you don't want to wake up your kids as you're playing with your saber downstairs. Uh, let me just. Sorry, let me just change the sound font on this one. <laughs> the crystal one isn't that loud. That's a good one. Okay, so this is the louder sound font. This will actually sound like a lightsaber. Um, here's what I do, my high-tech solution. That's about it. Um, some of these high-end sabers have a mute. So if you hold this button down on the high-end and you turn it on, you get the blade and no sound. Um, so that's a that's a feature of a high, of one of these high end sound cards. Um, if you don't have it, uh, probably there's two two possibilities. Either you just need to have something that you can fit in your speaker pommel that won't damage the speaker that'll block it off. You have to unscrew the pommel, put something on there um, that's a that just blocks the speaker. Or if you're handy with the wiring, you could actually wire in a switch that would bypass the speaker. It wouldn't be that complicated if you did it in in fitting with your Saber's aesthetic. Um, and just if you wanted to mute it, you actually have a, a switch that, that just shuts off the speaker. It would be a relatively simple wiring job. Yeah, you could also um, just put a solid pommel on there. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know, it doesn't, it's not vented for sound. And because yeah. I've, I've done that, I've put, put vented pommels on the ones that we do have sound on. And um, yeah, you can't hear anything. <laughs> it's not going yeah. through aluminum. So. I think Plagueis has one. Oh. Yeah. To demonstrate, yeah, I'm just putting a solid pommel from my Liberator in my... Okay. You know, and that makes it pretty good. You can still... Oh, yeah. Kind of hear it sneak out a little bit, but it's pretty much all the way muted. So, yeah, just putting a solid pommel on, uh, you know, a sound-equipped saber is a pretty good solution, I think. You know? Cool. I think it's always good to have a solid pommel, you know, just in case you want to swing it around in your house at night and not wake up, you know, your siblings or whatever. And not annoy everybody. You know, I think it's a good idea to keep a solid pommel on hand. Yeah, it's pretty well. Yeah, we we I had a lot of fun last night or on Halloween with 
with with the sound savers because that's that sound is loud and you know it doesn't really even matter what it is it scares the living daylights out of people very sudden really um yeah um you're you're throwing out a lot of terms about the sound cards um Obviously, there's a, a lot of different choices between sound cards and, and all that kind of thing. Um, do you want to run through uh, some kind of overview of what we should look for in a sound card or what, what's out there and all that kind of thing? Yeah. yeah, I can give you a couple different things. I haven't, um, I haven't tried all the sound cards that are available, um, and this has actually changed. You know, the choices used to be, even, even four years ago, the choices were a Master Replicas Hasbro card that you either pulled out of a Master Replicas Saber, um, the Hasbro Toy Saber card, which was really lame and uh, and just really really basic, if you tore it out of a Toy Saber, and then um, you, know, you had your high end say uh, sound card like a Crystal Focus. Um, and since then, there have been probably four different other people that have taken a stab at making or engineering or designing a sound card. And uh, the good thing is they're actually quite different. So um, you know you could go to a con and you could have someone with a Crystal Focus Saber. And someone with uh, you know something that was designed by Nova Sound or a Hasbro card, um, or now you've got um, uh, the names escaping me, the uh, Igniter by by a guy named Nigon on the forums, um, and it's a really you know de well developed card as well with a lot of features. So you can actually compare them. And go, oh, this one's a little bit louder. This one's a little bit clearer. This one runs extra blinky lights. This one controls the flicker of the blade. This one has no blade control at all. So you know, you that's probably the best way is if you can get to one of these cons and you can put these things side by side and, and kind of hear them and test them. Um, short of that, what I will tell you is that uh, I pretty much use the Plector Labs equipment exclusively um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is I've, I've learned from, from a lot of experience over the last five years uh, that Herb at Plector Labs is incredibly uh, reliable and excellent to deal with. Um, and I've helped them on some of the research and development, the bug hunting of products before they come out. Um, and just the capability of what his stuff does and uh, and just, you know, from, from bumper to bumper, it's just really well built. So I've kind of made the decisions as long as I have access to, to, to those things, whether it be a custom saber shop, which you can get the, um, I'm, I'll run through them in a minute, but the Petit Crouton and the Nano Biscotti are the sound cards you can get through the custom saber shop. The, the higher end crystal focus you could only get from the Plector Labs website, and they only release them in small batches, so they're very sought after. Um, but there are other independent guys that have a website here or there that you can go to. You can order a card depending on their wait list. Um, you know, or you can often, this is what people don't realize, you can find sometimes a brand new card uh, on eBay. You know, and you oh. can pick up a Crystal Focus on eBay or a Petit Crouton that's a couple generations older for less. And, uh, you know, maybe it's been in a saber and someone's taken it out. So if you want to buy something and experiment and not be too afraid of butchering it and starting from scratch, which inevitably happens if you're a first time right. electronics right. you're soldering and you short something out and right. I've done it a couple of times so um, but in terms of features you've got basic boards now what's out there so you could still tear something out of a master replica or Hasbro saber um, the nano biscotti is a fifty dollar sixty dollar ish board that has eight swings eight clashes a hum sound a power on a power off basic you want to get into something that's over $100, you get the Petit Crouton, which has the eight hum or eight swings, eight clashes, hum, power on. It's got the auxiliary button for the blaster lock uh, or a lockup sound. So something like that's what this auxiliary button here does. So you got a, a blaster block sound or, or the lockup sound. So pretty much the lowest end sound card with that feature would be about 120 bucks for the Petit Crouton. Um, and then it just, yeah, it goes up from there. The Crystal Focus is a more advanced version of, like, the PT Crouton with better sound capability, louder, clearer, more sound banks. You can play music on it. actually has, like, uh, <laughs> a couple of dozen tracks of music. I've got some Star Wars themes loaded on mine. So, yeah, it's just, you know, so you've got everything from, like, a under $50 card to something that is, well, the, the Crystal Focus, if you can get them, are... What, like 200 euros or something so they work out to be you know over 200 bucks but uh, yeah but it's actually considering what they do that's it's pretty cheap yeah. it's, a, it's a small sound lab in, in and of itself it's yeah it, it really is it's it's a sound card LED controller um, you know it controls it's it's the brain of a high-end saber 
That's very cool. Yeah. Who, who thought these <laughs> these toys would have brains? Yeah. Right. Well, what, when 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 can we actually emit a, a, an energy? Yeah, yeah, right. when, when can we get rid of the plastic too? Um, but one of the things that we that we were talking about briefly uh, before we before we started up tonight was uh, kind of the evolution, um, and we, we talked a little bit about your evolution with what you've created. But uh, could we could you uh, give us kind of the uh, the Jane's history of uh, of lightsabers from from Hasbro in the seventies to what we have now. Uh, yeah, there are, like I said, I think before we uh, we started to air, there's there's several of the guys that I connect with that are actually talking about putting together a timeline, maybe even a book form of the lightsaber hobby, since it's just it keeps growing and it's not slowing down. Um, because you go back, uh, you probably go back 20 years, and uh, or you, really you go back to the release of the Phantom Menace, um, even a bit before that. That's kind of when the custom uh, lightsaber or Build your own lightsaber hobby really took off. Um, before that, there was there was uh, something called the Big Yellow Box. I don't know if anybody ever saw that. There's a guy put up a website and showed how to make uh, what looks like a lightsaber from things you could find at a hardware store. And some of them were actually really well thought out and cool. They weren't initially made to fight with. The concept of something that actually lit up that you could fight with hadn't, wasn't even on the radar yet. Um, and right around time, uh, the Phantom Menace, or shortly before that, people started to make sabers with high power LEDs and removable polycarbonate blades that you could actually strike and they weren't going to break. Uh, Master Replicas came out with the, the sabers that we all started to see by the end of, uh, you know, by the, uh, I think the release of Episode 3. Uh, pretty much everybody had one of those, or a lot of people had one of those. Um, custom Saber Shop started to make parts. Uh, Ultra Sabers and parts were making uh, kind of uh, production models for people. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was someone else around that time. Random Sabers was another one. and. Uh, Advanced Light Weaponry, ALW, was making some things that you could fight with. So there's a bunch of things that happened really quickly, or right around that time. Um, but it was all pretty much, with the exception of Parks, it was all pretty much the same technology. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then over the next uh, over the next decade, things just kept advancing. Every year, there'd be uh, new innovations, new ideas, new concepts. Uh, we dropped electroluminescent blades uh, like a... Like a you know, just it, they just were bad old technology. You couldn't fight with them, and they were really dim. And compared to all of a sudden, we had three watt LEDs, and now we have ten watt LEDs. Um, yeah, it's it's not slowing down. I don't know if that gives you a Jane's overview. There's just so much to touch. I don't know when the first sound card hit um, that was non master replicas would have been. Uh, that probably would have been what, eight years ago. Collector Labs was doing some sound card stuff eight years ago, seven years ago. Yeah, I don't want to quote because I can't remember exactly when it was, but yeah, right, okay. no problem, no problem. Um, God, well, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm, I'm kind of dying to see some of your stuff. Yeah. Uh, you got you got some of the, the um, of, of your savers laying laying around. You can uh, show off for us. Uh, this this is what I like to show off because in terms of customizing, this is actually doing a curved saber um, oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. you have to fight with is really challenging to do. Um, for a number of reasons, because you've got uh, you've got to have something with a curve, and then you've got to have something to attach uh, the you know the pommel, the emitter um, to it. So most people that have built curve sabers, you know, basically have, have used some kind of plumbing tube that's curved. Or this is actually built. This is my Darth Bane saber. This is built from a rainbow vacuum wand, which had a really nice subtle curve to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I used uh, I mod I machined down a, a custom saber shop blade adapter, or not a blade adapter quarter inch adapter in order to fit this just perfectly and then I did a, a what's I call it uh, my crate bone technique which is simulated bone so I've got a simulated bone handle and I've got a mod heavily modified custom saber shop blade holder and then I've uh, managed to machine them down so that I could actually mount um, these are these claws are mounted from the inside so there's actually screws that hold them in from the inside so they they're they're really solid uh, my goal is to make a, a dual worthy really high end saber that um, it's got the this one's got the crystal focus version five and as Darth Bane it's got a red blade now this one doesn't have the fancy flash on clash because that um, that's already this is a relatively new saber but the flash on clash is even newer I didn't install it in this saber and it's got a smaller battery um, just because of space constraints but what it does have is the oh I'll need a screwdriver. 
Stand by. I'll be right back. Yeah, this one's really cool. Okay, I'm back. Fortunately, my computer is in my shop. So I've got the bone secured on there so it doesn't vibrate or slip when I'm dueling or fighting. And I've actually used the saber to fight with. Um, but the bone slides off. And inside, I don't know if you can see it, there's a, I've got a, a bar graph and a red crystal. And the crystal uh, isn't set up to pulse, but it comes on with the blade. And the bar graph actually plays animations. So I can program the seven LEDs to do whatever I want. In this case, I've got them channeling what looks like a power flow um, going up the blade. So I could have it in display mode where I could sit and I can show all these, you know, there's brass fittings and all kinds of brass stuff. Um, so it looks really cool. And one of the reasons that I'm proud of the Sabre is because not only does it look really cool, but I've managed to engineer it in a way that the inner chassis all, almost acts like its own suspension system. So it, there's, there's flex and tension on there. So when I'm fighting, it, it, uh, it transfers the vibration to the card. The card reads it really well, and it doesn't move. So it, when, I, you know, when I want to take a nice look at it, it's exactly where it was the last time. There's no sloppy part sliding around in there. And uh, that's, that's fun for me when I can nail that and know that it's solid. So this is probably my most talked about high-end saber. So there you have it, Darth Bane. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. overwhelmed, I guess. I'm yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, I know. This has been <laughs> more than enlightening. But, uh, yeah. you know, and obviously uh, starting to peak our yeah. creative juices more. You forgot to show um, another really cool uh, feature of that saber. I like um, yeah, the, the lights off. You know, how he, he has his bone sleeve, but it actually lights up a little bit. The You can see the light through the bone sleeve a little bit, because I watched the video on the Sabre, and I don't know if you can demonstrate that, Rob, or not, but... Yeah, this one's actually got a little bit of a rim of translucent material um, as a shim in the bone, um, so when the Sabre's... Uh, when, when the lights are activated inside, you can see it. Oops. I'm going to shut it off. You should be able to still see a red glow there. I don't know if you can make it out in the camera. But, uh, yeah, there's different ways of using light and not just a blinky LED that you plug in, but actually having a way of it show subtly through a, through a part. Um, or you can drill holes and grooves and machine grooves in certain parts of the saber so light escapes in certain ways that give it a kind of an artistic, subtle look. So, yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, very, very cool. I like, I like the, windowed, yeah. the, the windowed stuff. I haven't really found a really good windowed thing that I that I like awesomely yet, but I'm looking. <laughs> but yeah, I like I, I like all that. Uh, I mean, it's not very functional, but I don't care. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's the thing. In order in order to make a windowed saber that's functional, you have to have something that kind of covers it, so you're not jamming your finger in there and tearing stuff loose. Yeah. You know, and so, but and I was going to mention too this kind of stuff. A lot of people, if I'm at a con and I'm showing a saber like this. They, they rule it out like, oh, yeah, I, you know, that's, you know, I have to pay someone thousands of dollars to do that. If you're, if you're committed and want to learn, there's so much available online to learn how to build a crystal chassis. Trial and error, you're going to sacrifice some money by making mistakes, um, but the stuff that you learn enables you to basically, I mean, how cool is it to build your own saber? I mean, you, you tell me, Plagueis, you got your own saber that's got a crystal that actually lights up. I mean, that must have been pretty cool the first time you fired it up. It actually really was, and you were talking about like trial and error and stuff. You'd be surprised at how much money I blew through trying to get just that right. I mean, you know, so it does take practice. You're going to have to have a couple of blown LEDs and whatnot till you uh, arrive at the final product. Um, it yeah. takes practice. And, yeah, you're just going to have to sacrifice a little bit, but the end result it will be worth it. If you take the time... Do your research, put the effort forth, it'll be wor worth it. And I have those crystal chambers and all six or whatever of my stunt savers now, and it's really awesome. So. I can't. Okay. Uh, let us check out the, uh, I'm going to check the Facebook page here. We haven't had any questions show up at, uh, on the YouTube page yet. But I... Interesting. Um, I don't see anything. 
Nope. We don't have anything on, on our end. Do you have any more uh, questions off of the Twitter feed that we can... Uh, um... nope. But Twitter's pretty fast, so I'll say if there's anybody watching, unless we've bored you and you've tuned us out, just tweet <laughs> something random right now and I will mention your name. <laughs> yeah, right. So Twitter can be yeah, very right. fast. Yeah, yeah. It is a, it's a very quick feed. The no, last question I had here was the uh, the mute one, which was a good question, too. Yeah, no, we've had some good... Yeah. Yeah, we've been having um, some good questions in these things. Um, with all the things that we've talked about, um, is is there anything that... You know, we, we've been asking a lot of questions and other people have. Is there anything that you wanted to, you wanted to bring up? Anything you wanted to mention? I mean, you know, do, do either of you have anything that you want to throw out that we may not have touched on yet? Um, well, I was just going to, just another way of customizing. Um, well, I feel, I mean, it, it's easiest. I mean, if you're going to get really get into the custom saber building thing, uh, it's uh, um, kind of come up with this theory of like, it's probably easiest to kind of start with stunt sabers and maybe transition into sound um, and then just kind of do it on levels. Uh, and then when you get to sound, and you decide you want even more, then start adding, you know, little things like my liberator here. I added come on. There's a red blinky in my pommel. I don't know if it's going to Oh yeah, long. I see it. Yeah. That's you know starting off small with just you know, soundboards and stuff like that, you just start small and start adding things on until you get to a point where you're adding auxiliary switches and crystal chambers along with your soundboard, you know. So just kind of do it in level. Start with building a stunt saber and then maybe your next saber, go try and uh, add a sound card in it, you know, and try to do it on levels so you're not overwhelming yourself. And right, course, yeah, I've, I'm actually thinking of doing that to this one right here. Um, I'm, I'm just going to transfer this over to uh, uh, lithium ion as far as my batteries as a first kind of uh, foray into that. I might first, now throw first into step the, down the path. Yeah, and I might I might throw in a sound card in there just cuz now. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> but yeah, um, I agree. I think that's a really really good way to do it. That's how we've been doing it. We just kind of get into it. You can get those. I, I, I don't know how many makers out there. We do the Ultra Sabers. Um, there's probably other ones that are out there that use the MHS parts, or you can just go right to the custom saber shop, get everything you need right there to make your own. And like uh, Rob suggested, uh, you can even customize those parts even more, you know, as well. Um, we, we haven't talked about like wraps and all that kind of thing, but that's also something that we haven't got into, but that's probably something that we might. Think about because that's that's our background is, yeah. is wrapping handles and, and and that kind of thing doing, for swords. Yeah, doing just some some common repair or some art, a more artistic <clears throat> customization using leather and cord and wire and the like. And, and well, I've that kind of really thing. nice some really nice uh, artwork added to sabers using using textiles effectively. Yeah, yeah, and etchings and, and all yeah. kinds of engraving. Let's see. We've got a question here. Um, I don't know who. Oh, it's from Gonzo uh, two six nine hundred. Uh, considering how far lightsabers have come since Phantom Menace, uh, what will they look like once Episode Nine will be in theaters? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Oh boy. Uh, you, I don't know who wants to touch that one. Well, I've got the, actually the same question or similar question came through from uh, on, on Twitter from uh, Rylan Pantal, asking predictions for next saber innovations. So if we're if we're talking about the next two years, um, yeah, that's hard to say. I, I will mention one thing. Um, there a lot of talk about the black lightsaber blade uh, as seen in some of the video games and Clone Wars. Some of us who are purists think that that's a totally ridiculous concept. But sooner or later, you know, it, it, even ridiculous concepts lead to innovations. People, people there, and they're out there who have the intelligence and the stubbornness that when someone says, no, you can't do that, yeah. find a way. Yeah. And every once in a while, when a person finds a way to do something ridiculous, it turns out awesome. Now, I'm not predicting that for the black, black lightsaber blade. I think that's ridiculous. I don't think there's anything to that. But there are other innovations, which I'm really excited to see what happens with. Um, Color blending has been a relatively new one. 
Um, but upping the intensity level and the efficiency of LEDs, so you get a brighter blade for less power and the ability to, to you know, right now if you, you mix colors, there are certain colors that just, you have, um, you have trouble getting a really bright, vibrant, like a blue, that, that kind of, there are really bright greens out there, there are really bright reds out there, but getting a really, just nailing blue has sometimes been challenging. So as LEDs advance, we're going to see that. As batteries advance, we're going to see things that just last longer. Um, one of the innovations that's not new, um, but it hasn't really been done well, is, uh, is remote access. So Bluetooth uh, is, a, is an interesting technology, but my understanding is that it just doesn't do what you need it to do fast enough in order to be able to, you, know, you can plug a Sabre, uh, like my Janus Sabre, you can plug it into the computer, and there's an interface that you can program uh, myriads of different functions of the sound card, and you can customize the blending of the color. I've been trying to nail that, ba that perfect Vader red that's just got a, it's almost like a pinky red. Um, so you can do that with computer interfaces, but what's coming, I, I think, is, is perhaps the ability to do that um, wirelessly and to do other things wirelessly. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, and I, I, being that I know Ur from Collector Labs, I'm not giving anything away here because I honestly don't know what he's working on right now, but I wouldn't be surprised if he takes, he's got a technology where um, you can use a, an RF transmitter to transmit the, the, the motion detection of your saber to an auditorium sound uh, soundboard, and you could play the sounds of your saber for stage combat on the on the big sound system. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you brought something like that back, being that technology is is advancing. Um, it's kind of you know, in his terms, it's kind of like it's kind of an older tech, although reliable. Um, it's not cheap. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if that's coming back. Um, stuff like that. Yeah. Any actually, other ideas? Yeah, I think I think actually um, I'll, I'll reveal. I we've been experimenting with some of that um, uh, sensor technology of, of wireless, you know, wireless stuff with, with, with my friend. We're still in you know the infancy of that kind of stuff, but yeah. So that, that's probably a good place a good place yeah. to lay your bets is in something yeah. something wireless like that. Generally speaking, wire wireless information technology is. Just going to keep growing, and yeah. any. You know, I mean, you've got a computer inside a metal tube. <clears throat> How convenient would it be that you don't have to actually plug anything into it? You just yeah. start typing, and you have access to whatever it is that you you want to program on your device. Yeah, and, and we're we're kind of into into the maker fairs and the ma the maker maker, the maker, culture. Ma maker culture as well. And I have seen some amazing things people doing with LEDs and computer interfaces and wireless interfaces that when some of that stuff starts to blend into the uh, to the Sabre community, some of that stuff is going to be pretty, pretty cool. It's still real rough and big yeah. right now, but I, I, everything gets miniaturized. You know? mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I mean, we live in a university town, so we got lots of people working this kind of stuff, yeah. and they're always giving us little winks and nods <laughs> to the, oh, look at just wait another two years. Wait another yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Next right. year. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't think it'll be very long at all before you can charge your Sabre wirelessly. There's already the, yeah. the capability yeah. to do that with your phone. Um, and speaking of phones, I wouldn't be surprised if we start getting wireless in terms of interface. There's nothing to stop anybody from building an app for your iPhone or your Android that accesses your Sabre and has some kind of pairing or relationship or functionality. I don't know what you would do with that. Um, but, I mean... You yeah, well, actually, opens yeah. Doors. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of the idea. Is is, is we we were to, to to work something out with an app yeah. so that it would be belt mounted. On the other hand, placing a phone call on your lightsaber hilt, I, it, it, it's, it seems a little weird, but yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Someone out there would like that. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Meaning you're playing. No, you're no, playing I, yeah, I, oh, I know, I know. Oh, oh. But as you know, you know, like you know, building a phone into your lightsaber hilt. I mean. That's, that just seems good, but why? Culture. Yeah, right. Well, hey, I mean, we, 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 we walk around with them on our belts when we're not fighting with them sometimes. You know, and if they had some sort of functionality, like they were a phone and a flashlight and a, yeah. I don't know. Multi-tools. You know. Who knows? Who knows? You know, smartphones, smart sabers. Yeah. I, maybe, I, maybe. I, 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 if I remember correctly, Predicting the future of technological advancement is I yeah. mean, be, beyond the near future, like the next few months. Um, it's really, really hard to do it with any yeah. degree of accuracy. So 
I, I guess I'm just more enthusiastic about the opportunities than concerned about the specifics. Yeah, I, I kind of remember uh, if anybody watches the Venture Brothers, there's a, a lightsaber bit in one of them. They go to a garage sale. One of them picks up a lightsaber. Oh my God, I've wanted one of these forever. And he goes up to somebody who wants to kill him. And it just kind of passes through him harmlessly. <laughs> what? You didn't think that thing worked, did you? <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know where that's going to go. Um, I don't well, know. One, what, one, what thing I add, if I oh, may, yes, um, go ahead. one thing you can be sure of is as technology advances and more people get into this hobby, the, the current of technology and what sabers can do right now just gets cheaper. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, four years ago, what was a top of the line thousand dollar lightsaber you can buy or build yourself now for three hundred bucks, really? Yeah. In four years. Sure. So you know, a couple, couple of years from now, you'll be able to get you know functionality and features that are are new now, uh, will be a lot easier to get. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. how everything's all all of the technology is going. I mean, um, and one that's one of the things we really really like about the MHS. System, the modular health system, the customer system, because it, it does allow for that. You yeah, know? and it, it's, it's uh, forward compatible. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, hmm. well, do we have any, any more questions on any of our uh, various sources here? Nothing. I don't. I don't. We don't have anything off of the YouTube yeah. page anymore. So any any, any other last minute thoughts or or com I, I, Rob, we definitely want to want to give you give you a chance to uh, to uh, pitch. You know how how to get in touch with you. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Give us give us the lowdown on how um, anybody viewing wants to get a custom saber from you or um, you know anything like that. Get into contact with you. Well, in terms of what, what I do, what I'll tell you is that um, I specialize in the really high-end, one-of-a-kind pieces, but I'm not able to do them quickly enough to make a living at it, so I've added um, a, a more of a, an upgradable economy line that I think some of you might have seen. And these are my Ascend stunt savers, so these are my first line, um, but these have been really highly engineered to be upgradable. So you can buy a, a stunt saber like this uh, for about 200 bucks. Um, you can buy a sound equipped one with a with a plector equipped um, crystal shard sound card for under 500 bucks. Um, but the design, the beauty of what I wanted to market with these is that someone could buy it, they could experiment with taking it apart, and I'm doing YouTube videos showing how to do certain upgrades. Buy this part from this place, and here's how you could add sound to your own saber. And, you know, and for 300 bucks, you could you could do it yourself, and you could get a really really cool high end saber. They're one piece, super durable, um, and I. I this, this is a departure for me because usually I would do made-to-order stuff with timetables. Well, I've invested in enough that I can stock these. So whoever wants to buy them from, I can turn around and get it to them, get it in their hands really quickly. And right. to find that stuff and other stuff that I'm working on, including my Holocron projects and things like that, just uh, GenesisCustomSavers.com or just Google Genesis Custom Savers. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook, making a big noise as much as I can. So. Yeah. I'm yeah, around. Holiday, holiday season is coming up. Yep. You know. And gift cards. Yeah. yeah. PayPal oh, gift hey. Cards. You, can buy, you can buy them on my site. You know, for your the special person in your life who needs a lightsaber. Yeah. There you go. And anybody who knows us, huh? Uh, <laughs> you know. we're, we're not dropping any subtle hints. We're dropping blatant. Hints. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rob, you you have a little contest going on right now too on your Facebook that people. That's can right. I've been having fun uh, monkeying with images, um, photoshopping images from Star Wars as little ads, and so I'm kind of throw a contest out there that uh, whoever comes up with the best little ad photo and posts it on my Facebook page by November 10th, they're going to get $100 off in a send saver. So there's already been some really fun su submissions on the page. So go to the Facebook page and <laughs> uh, and look under posts by others, and you can see all the all the things people have posted up there. Hmm. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, that's that's tempting. <laughs> well, this is this has been uh, this has been a spectacular time. I I, I went Absolutely. into this not really knowing what to expect out of yeah. this. So yeah. my expectations were, of course, exceeded. But I'm I'm it, just the, the 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 amount of information, the the cool stuff that has come out of this is just remarkable. So yeah. I, th Rob, thank you so very much for for making yourself available. Tonight. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and we gotta have you back. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd, I, I, I love talking about this stuff, so you can't get me to shut up.
Excellent, excellent. That's exactly the type of people we like. You fit right in. Yeah. Um, uh, Pelagius, thank, thanks very much for being for being in and being involved. It was a, it was a pleasure to, to meet you face to face, so to speak. Yep. Thank you. All right, and uh, that, that brings us to the end. Yeah, I guess that brings us to the end. Uh, Darth Donovan, Vornok, signing off from Terra Prime Live. May the force be with you. Hang on, fellas. We'll just uh, end it here. <laughs>